When you think of an NBA player's physique, you think of a tall, chiseled body and broad shoulders. But this video is about the complete opposite type of players. The ones who like donuts and fast food, and who ran out of breath after two trips down the court. They're the 10 heaviest players in NBA history. Number 10. Yao and Taco, 310 pounds. Yao Ming was the most talented, super tall player in NBA history. At 7'6", he had a feathery jump shot and a great feel for the game. And it's a shame that constant foot and knee injuries derailed his prime. Yao was often injured because his lower extremities couldn't handle the grind of carrying his 310-pound body up and down the court. It wasn't like Yao was fat. He was just super big, with a head that's almost twice the average size. The Great Wall of China makes Shaq look small, and it would be strange if he wasn't on this list. The same is true for Taco Fall who shares the same height and weight measurements as Yao Ming, 7 foot 6 and 310 pounds. Taco is probably a bit taller because the NBA now measures players without shoes, which wasn't the case when Ming came to the league 22 years ago. Taco is the only current NBA player listed above 300 pounds, which is logical considering the trend of downsizing in the pace and space era, where Draymond and LeBron can thrive playing the center position. However, those are just official numbers, and I'm sure there are some players who will exceed the 300-pound mark in 2022. Zion, if you're watching this, I was thinking about you here. We all saw the commercial. Number 9. Kevin Duckworth, 320 pounds Unlike some of the players on this list, Kevin Duckworth was a pretty good player. He was a two-time All-Star in the early 90s, weighing around 280 pounds, which was appropriate for his seven-foot frame. But unhealthy habits saw him slowly add on pounds. And as the numbers on the scale got bigger, the numbers on the stat sheet got proportionally smaller. When Duck reached 320 pounds, he could no longer fly. He barely even played in the last few seasons, before retiring in 1997. Number 8. Robert Trailer, 320 pounds Trailer was a 6'9 center who was a McDonald's All-American the same year as Kevin Garnett, Vince Carter, and Paul Pierce. He was also an All-American in college, but he is mostly known for two things. The first one is his nickname, Tractor, which he earned because of his bulky frame. The second one happened on draft night after the Dallas Mavericks selected him sixth overall. Then, the Milwaukee Bucks figured that Trailer would have a much better career than Dirk Nowitzki, so they traded Dirk and another pick to Dallas to get themselves a brand new Tractor. Of course, it was one of the the worst trades in NBA history because Trailer averaged under five points per game in his career and will always be remembered as that chonky boy who got traded for a guy that scored over 30,000 points in the NBA. Number 7. Priest Lauderdale, 325 pounds. Priest Lauderdale sounds like the name of a pastor of a local church, but it's not. It belongs to a 7'4", 325-pound center who got drafted 28th overall in the 1996 NBA draft. But other than height and weight, his unusual name doesn't appear in any record books, considering he only stayed in the NBA for two seasons, playing in garbage time of 74 games. Number 6. Thomas Hamilton, 330 pounds. This 7'2 center had a disappointing NBA career after being undrafted in the 1995 draft. He only appeared in 11 games for Boston at the back end of the season after they started to tank. In the next three years, he was signed and waived by several teams and never played a minute due to his weight. Before getting a chance with the Rockets in 1999, he got nicknamed Two Sandwiches in Houston because one wasn't enough to satisfy his appetite. He only played 22 games as a Rocket before his big fat NBA wedding called for a divorce. Number 5. Michael Sweetney, 348 pounds After an excellent college career at Georgetown, where he averaged 23 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks as a junior, Michael Sweetney was selected 9th overall in the stacked 2003 NBA Draft by the Knicks. His NBA dream finally came to fruition. He became a millionaire, and it seemed like the world was in his hands. But due to his father's death, Sweetney became depressed, and he even attempted suicide during his sophomore NBA season. He didn't take any drugs for depression. Sweetney's only drug was sweets and every type of fast food. He came to the league weighing 275 pounds, and by the end of his four-year career, he was close to 350. He's now a spokesperson for depression and mental health, and he always says that if he had sought help sooner, he could have had a 15-year career. Number 4. Eddie Curry, 350 pounds Eddie Curry's nickname was Baby Shaq due to his size and efficiency around the basket, but in the end, Curry could only be in the same sentence with Shaq when it comes to weight. Curry was very quick and mobile for his 7-foot frame, and even though he was never a good rebounder or defender, he was great at scoring the ball.
Ball. Coming to the NBA out of high school as the fourth pick in the 2001 draft, it took him a while to start playing well, but he eventually did. Curry led the NBA in field goal percentage in 2003, and in 2005, he was the best scorer on a playoff team at only 22 years old. In 2007, Curry averaged 19.5 points per game for the Knicks, posting career highs across the board. At the age of 24, it seemed like his career trajectory could only go upwards and that he'd become an all-star. Unfortunately for the poor Knicks fans, the only thing that went upwards with Curry was the number on the scale. He was never exactly skinny, weighing more than 290 pounds as a rookie, but just two years after he averaged 19 per game, he swole up to 350 pounds, and his career was basically over. Curry played only 26 more games in the next five seasons before retiring at the age of 31. Number 3. Sim Bular, 360 pounds Vivek Ranadive is an Indian-American businessman and the owner of the Sacramento Kings. Vivek got famous for saying that four players should play defense and that the fifth player should stay in the opposing half court, waiting for a turnover or a missed shot so he could stay open for an easy basket. Sim Bular is the first NBA player of Indian descent, and only because of that reason he was able to play, because Vivek wanted to see his countrymen suit up in the NBA. Bular is 7 foot 5, weighing 360 pounds, and he had a very unspectacular three-minute career over three NBA games. Despite playing only three minutes, he made this list, and the ones where we listed the tallest NBA players ever, where he occupies the sixth spot for the tallest player ever to play NBA basketball. Number 2. Oliver Miller, 375 pounds. Big O is the famous nickname of Oscar Robertson, and he earned the nickname because he was a great player whose name starts with the letter O. Big O was also the nickname of Oliver Miller, who wasn't a great player, he was just big. Despite being undersized at 6'9", if we can even use the word undersized, Miller was regarded as one of the best centers in the NCAA, averaging 12 points, 7 rebounds, and over 2 blocks per game. Miller was tough, mobile, and he had a really soft touch around the basket, shooting at a phenomenal 64% clip. Big O weighed around 280 pounds at the University of Arkansas, and when he was drafted 22nd overall by the Suns in the 1992 NBA Draft, the scale showed 305. That's how much his new teammate Charles Barkley weighed after the Sixers drafted him. But Chuck successfully shed the extra pounds and played most of his Hall of Fame career between 250 and 260. But Oliver Miller did not have the accountability of Sir Charles, and after a trip to the finals in 1993 and a few promising seasons early on, Miller ballooned to 375 pounds. It was a miracle that he could even play with all the extra weight, considering he stuck around the league for nine years. Even though he wasn't the heaviest NBA player ever, Big O definitely had the highest body fat percentage. Number 1. Shaquille O'Neal, 395 pounds Shaq likes to say that he's still playing in the league in the form of Giannis Antetokounmpo. Shaq views Giannis as his style successor and the only player worthy of the name Superman. While half of this flattering is only a disguised diss to Dwight Howard, there are certainly some similarities between the Greek freak and the young Shaq, the one who played in Orlando. When he came to the NBA in 1992, Shaq was a lean 7-1 center who could run the floor like a gazelle, lead the fast break, and compete completed with a thunderous dunk on the other end, just like Giannis does now. O'Neal weighed 292 pounds as a rookie, which is a lot for everybody else on the planet, but the big diesel looked almost skinny at that weight. In 2000, when he was in his physical prime and when he won his only MVP award, he weighed around 340 pounds, looking like he was made of muscle and a 7'1 Dwayne Johnson. However, he still felt he needed to get bigger because he could still get thrown off balance in the post. Shaq felt that more mass equals more power and he instructed his personal chef to overload his meals with meat and potatoes, and the pounds quickly began to accumulate. When the Lakers won their second championship in 2001, O'Neal weighed 365 and a whopping 395 pounds when they three-peated in 2002. Although the added weight helped Shaq win three finals MVP trophies, this was not very smart in the long term because his feet and knees were killing him. When he got to South Beach, he needed to get back to 12% body fat per Miami Heat policy, and he dropped all the way to 325 when he won his fourth title in 2006. Unlike Tim Duncan, who lost a lot of weight past the age of 30 to preserve his knees and ankles, Shaq put on more weight in the twilight of his career. Because he had a poor diet filled with carbs, he often got injured and didn't have a significant role past the age of 35. Shaq looked quite chubby with the Cavs and the Celtics, hovering between 350 and 370 pounds until his retirement.